Hey, so I think like a lot of people, I've been wanting to spot weld for a long time now, but didn't really want to spend the money on the spot welders I was seeing on AliExpress or on eBay, you know, or Amazon. They're all like 200 bucks and they look kind of cheap. And, you know, I just don't want to spend that kind of money on something that's not going to work. And they rarely came with the pen I wanted for less than 300. And I was like, that's just too much money to spend on sort of, you know, spot welding some 1860 cells together. Um, and then I came across this like $30 or so portable transistor mini spot welder. Cool. So this is cheap and you have to pair it with a battery of some kind. Um, but you know, it's a good option if you've got the battery, which I do. On the other hand, I've seen a lot of reviews basically saying this thing's going to break all the time. Uh, people saying that it works for a little bit and then it smokes and it's done working. Um, and then I came across a YouTube video where someone, and I'll, I'll put that YouTube below because it was a great video, basically saying that the reason this thing's breaking for a lot of people is they're using a battery that's too weak for it. So according to the instructions, this needs a battery at least 120 to 180 amps, okay? Um, and a lot of people are using batteries that have something like, you know, seven amp hours, and it's like a standard battery. It's not a super lipo, you know, high C current, you know, high current uh, battery. So if it's seven amp hours, and let's say it outputs even at 10 C, you're only going to get 70 amps. And that's just not enough for this thing to work well. So maybe it works for a little bit, but it's just not the right amount of power um, for for the for this little thing. So uh, I put it to the test and I actually had really good results, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so yeah, I think this thing rocks. I think it works really well. I just think you have to pair it with a really strong battery. I'm pairing it with a 12 volt, 280, 280 amp hour uh, EVE life, uh, lithium iron phosphate battery that I've made, 4S lithium iron phosphate cell. That's not very economical. I just have that available right now. So that's what I'm going to use, but it, it obviously would work really well with a good car battery, anything that can put output the amperage that it needs. Um, otherwise it comes with these two, with these two leads and the pens. You just uh, screw them in right there, right here. It comes with these two. I had to crimp these on. These are M6 connectors so that I can connect it to my, uh, you know, my, my, my battery. Um, on off button. This is how you choose the mode. This is how you adjust the power. Uh, yeah, it's got a little instructions here about the battery and comes with a set of instructions that are pretty clear. It seems like a lot of people have trouble and the main issue is that they're either uh, giving it too weak a battery or they're giving it a really strong battery uh, or they're not calibrating the power correctly. But, you know, for 30 bucks-ish or whatever I paid, I think it's around that, uh, you really can't beat it, you know? It's way better. Uh, you've got way more options. You can try to find a used car battery that's still working well, something like that. And this thing is, you know, it's going to work for you. If you're going to do hundreds of spot welds and make a giant, you know, um, like power wall battery out of 18650s, um, yeah, this probably isn't for you, but it's great. So let me show you how it works. Okay, so uh, here's the setup. Uh, you can see the we've got the portable spot welder. I've set it to 10 and it's on auto. It's hooked up to my, I've got a battery bank of EVE 280 amp hour cells. So I'm running at about 13.3 volts right now and let's give it a try. Uh, hold on real quick. Uh, safety glasses, there we go. Okay, let's do it. Uh, I'd like to apply a little bit, a fair amount of pressure, not too close, but close. Okay, and that's just, you know, one set. And I can pull them apart with a with a fair amount of strength, but not not a ton. So it could be better. Let's see if we can do a slightly better job. Okay. And again, oh, that was easy. So I was having a lot of luck before, but let's see if we can do it a little better. Okay. And see, can't tear them apart at all. So I think, I don't know what I was doing wrong before, maybe keeping them a little bit closer. Oh, there they go. But bottom line is it works pretty well. Obviously you have to play with your technique a fair amount. You wanna master your technique as best you can. Uh, I think you wanna get a good setup. If you're gonna do this a lot and you're gonna do a lot of cells, setup's gonna matter. So that's a little weak. Maybe I'll bump the energy up to 12. Uh, but the thing is if I'm, I'm using uh, lithium iron phosphate, EVE cells, these have 280 amp hours. They can easily output 280 amps for this split second. So um, I'm getting a lot of amps, so I don't want a lot of power. Um, and when it works well, see like that, they're on there. They're not coming apart, right? So it works pretty well. And uh, we can also practice on a cell. I did this one before. Oh, there it came off. Did one before. 
Pressure's on a cell. And it's on there. It's really on there. And that's just with one, not even a double. So yeah, uh, this works really well, especially when you're using it with really high amps. As I said before, the thing that's most important is that you give this thing a lot of amps. Okay. Uh, it says a uh, car battery um, or lithium ion, you know, but basically you're going to have to use at least 100 amps on this. Anything that's weak is not going to give the amperage it needs. This doesn't have a transformer on it. It's not going to take something that has, you know, really high voltage but low amps down to low voltage but high amps. Uh, this is, you know, all it's going to do is connect these two wires. And if the power source you're using doesn't give it a lot of amps, it's just not going to work very well. And it's actually going to break this. Okay. So the main thing is, um, definitely make sure you have a lot of amps. Also, it says nine to 12 volts. I'm running 13.3. It's absolutely no problem. So I think if you want to use a car battery, that's at most, you know, 12.9 volts, that's going to be fine too. Just make sure that you can really pump out the amps and whatever power source you're using. But otherwise, as you can see, I've been practicing all day. I've probably done, you know, maybe 50 practice welds. I'm trying to work on my technique and figure out the power. And uh, it's no problem at all. You know, it's not, it's showing no signs of breaking. There's no heat, nothing's weird. It's working perfectly. So I think this thing breaks only because people mistreat it and they don't give it the amperage it needs. Uh, otherwise, I think it's actually a really cool product. I just need to set up, you know, properly. If you're gonna sit and do a bunch of welds, you're gonna make a small battery for yourself or fix a battery, you probably want a good setup. So that's my next uh, move. Okay, thank you. Very, okay, uh, very quickly, uh, final touches here. Um, this will switch it from auto to manual, and there's a possible switch that you can put in for manual, but I think auto is way better. And this is how you adjust the power. But I hope this video is useful. Uh, please remember to like or subscribe. Uh, it really means a lot. Thank you.